Hello all. This week we were going to do our fourth installment of the Book of Jonah. However, because of uh, the people we had scheduled had both medical and family emergencies happen. So instead, we're going to do a, a brief history and info on Ash Wednesday, which was actually last Wednesday. So we're late on that one too. Uh, but it beats nothing. So I hope that you find this enjoyable and look forward to Jonah next week. When's the last time you changed your mind? I mean, seriously, think about it. When's the last time you learned something new and it genuinely changed your heartfelt opinion about something? This is a lost art. I am surprised at how many conversations I have with people where I point out something that is obviously factually untrue and it has absolutely no impact on their opinion about something. The Christians have a word for this, changing of your mind, learning something new, coming to a realization, and it's a word that we want to reclaim here on this channel. It's called repentance, and it's what we're talking about this week. Kindred UMC live show features adults discussing adult topics, occasionally with adult language. It may not be suitable for young viewers. Please use discretion before watching. This week, we are coming up on Ash Wednesday, which begs the question, just what even is Ash Wednesday? What is it? What does it mean? What is the point of it? And I'm glad you've asked all these questions and you've come to the right place because Ash Wednesday has its roots ultimately in the very first book of scripture, which we will read. Uh, I'm going to be reading from Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, but if you don't want to hear me read scripture, you are allowed to use the navigation links down below to skip wherever you would like. But for those of you who are hardcore like me, Let's read the Bible. So this is Genesis chapter 3, verse 19. This is after Adam and Eve have eaten of the fruit of the tree of the uh, knowledge of good and evil. They have committed the only sin that God commanded them not to commit. And this is part of the result, the consequence is often called the curse. So Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, this is God speaking to Adam. And it sounds like this, by the sweat of your face, you shall eat bread until you return to the ground for out of it, you were taken. You are dust and to dust you shall return. On its face, Ash Wednesday is very simple. It's the Wednesday that begins the Lenten season. This is the season that leads up to Easter. Easter is where Christians traditionally celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. So Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, which is sometime before. And Ash Wednesday is celebrated often by marking each other's foreheads with ash in the sign of a cross. And this signifies to ourselves and to the world that we are mortal, that we cause harm intentionally or unintentionally, and we need to repent from that. And usually most Christians during Lent will kind of pick something to uh, abstain from, something to make a change in. Maybe it's like giving up sugar or stop cussing or stop cheating on my wife so much. Just kidding. I don't do that. I promise. But they pick something to give up for the season of Lent, something that will uh, make them a better person, make them a better follower of Jesus, make them uh, more in line with uh, what is expected of us as followers of Christ. So we pick something to give up. And Ash Wednesday is kind of the beginning of that. It's a signifying uh, mark publicly and internally that we are intentionally repenting of something. We are turning away from something that we know to be harmful. The dog's causing a ruckus. Can you fucking geezer? Come here. You did it. You got up. I knew you could get up, you old man. Stupid back leg don't work. So inherent in Ash Wednesday is this idea that we are mortal and our mortality is a result of our imperfection. The fact that when we are tempted, we sometimes succumb, that we do bad things, we harm others, we harm ourselves, and that this is not what God wants from us. And as a result of this harm, this sometimes intended, sometimes unintended harm, we have mortality as a part of our existence. From dust you were created, to dust you shall one day return. These are the words often spoken on Ash Wednesday. It's a reminder that we have things that we can be remorseful for and that we can turn away from. Things that harm ourselves and things that harm others. 
So where did this practice even start? It wasn't part of the early church. The early church did not practice this. In fact, it wasn't widely practiced by the Catholic church until like the 11th century CE, like after Christ. So we're talking like Middle Ages, Dark Ages kind of uh, theme. And the reason they started doing it is because so sometimes people would commit sins that were so bad that they could no longer be part of the church. Unforgivable sins, they had to serve some kind of penance, some kind of uh, act that would that would punish them for what they've done. And so they, they instituted Ash Wednesday, and they would cover themselves in ashes and wear sackcloth for the entire Lenten season, and they wouldn't be able to participate in the life of the church until the Thursday before Easter, weeks and weeks and weeks later. And so this was, Ash Wednesday was originally a punishment, the way that you would pay for your horrible sinfulness. And not everyone did it, only the people who had committed terrible, terrible sins, like, I don't know, probably masturbation or something. Uh, And they wouldn't allow them to partake in the church until Maundy Thursday was what they call it. And it's where they celebrated the first institution of the Last Supper, the Eucharist, which is kind of at the center of Catholic theology. Funnily enough, if you're a United Methodist, I'm a I'm an ordained United Methodist pastor. Uh, John Wesley, who's the founder of our church, the reluctant founder of our church, he didn't he wasn't trying to start a new church. He was just trying to help out the Anglican Church and like make them more relevant and more you know, much like I'm in, in fact much like I'm doing right now. John Wesley did not incorporate Ash Wednesday or Lent into his common book of worship. It was not a part of the Methodist Church. In fact, most denominations did not include Ash Wednesday. It was just purely a Catholic thing. Uh, and this this went on until like the 1970s. 1970s, there was a change. All of a sudden, there was this evangelical mo- uh, movement, ev- evangelical moment, evangelical movement, who's to say, where uh, people started using the ash cross on the forehead as a way of incorporating their faith into their everyday life. Somebody comes through your grocery store line, and they've got ashes on their forehead in the shape of a cross. You're like, what the heck is that? They go, oh, I'm glad you asked, and now I can tell you all about Jesus. And so this became a regular practice in most Protestant denominations, as well as maintaining the Catholic practice, uh, ba- basically like four decades ago, four, four or five decades ago. So this is a relatively new idea that we would go to church on Ash Wednesday and somebody would put ashes on our forehead and they would say, from dust you were created to dust you will return. Remember that you're mortal. Remember that you make mistakes and remember that you have things that you need to change your mind about. Which brings me to the real purpose of Ash Wednesday that I think we can focus on. Whether or not you go to a worship service on Wednesday night and get ashes on your head and have a a preacher or a priest or a pastor say the magic words to you, doesn't really matter that much to me. The thing that matters most to me for you is that will you acknowledge and embrace the idea that you are not finished, you are not perfect, you do things that cause harm, you abstain from things that could help and do good. We all do this. I join you in that. We have things that we need to change our minds about. We have things in our lives that we need to repent from, things that harm others, things that harm ourselves. We need to be changed by a grace that is bigger than us. And when we cooperate with this God, this Holy Spirit, this grace that wants us to be better, when we humble ourselves before it and allow it to work inside of us, that's when miraculous, marvelous, wonderful, truly good things occur. So do not be afraid to learn new things and change your mind. Do not be afraid of the word repentance because from dust you were made and one day to dust you will return. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. 